About a week ago, I swore I was going mad. I'm going to have to admit that I hate being a guinea pig. It has every drawback and absolutely no upside. You get all the blame, none of the praise. Everything you manage to achieve is chalked up to luck. And every human failing you happen to stumble into becomes emblematic of your entire potential, the potential of all people like you and every person born within 10 years either side of you. I do so hate being an internet guinea pig. The internet found its way into my house the year I was born, 1996, but it found its way into my hands when I was 10. Before I had the chance to enact a Hollywood-approved adolescence, I was given the unique, first time in the history of humanity opportunity to forego all of the risks of the outside world, the odd kidnapping, the older men getting stranded somewhere, the zero-degree weather, hedonism, for a life indoors. Most of my peers scoffed at the concept. Facebook was just a new way of texting for them. For me, it was all upside. But I had no clue I was a guinea pig, rat even. They've been shocking me through my keyboard and I was too young to notice and I'm acclimated to it now. How cruel for the feed to send me messages, signs, how silly for it to encourage me on my little journey, my little sad journey through the dumb maze to get the cheese and zap through the brain again. And I thought this shame I keep locked below my throat was something to do with inaction. Now I think it may be the fracturing of myself into parts, spread across timelines, across bits, across spaces, interspersed on the net. Or perhaps it's all the lives I feel I should have lived by now, that I enjoy through my little window. Or perhaps it's the one life that in it collects all the pieces of myself I distribute into one mind, one experience, and she longs for stability. And maybe... That stability was not compromised by the internet. Perhaps that net is the only thing keeping it together. Do you ever wonder whether you're being a bit too honest in public?